Okay. So last time we defined uh, Gaussian curvature and uh, scalar curvature. So we have uh, for in a point, we have shape operator. And we know that this is uh, symmetric. Uh, therefore, diagonalizable. It has two uh, eigenvalues uh, and two eigenvectors. They correspond to uh, maximal and minimum values of the normal curvature, actually. So uh, E1, E2, uh, uh, principal directions. Directions and uh, K1, K2, uh, principal curvatures. Right? Uh, they correspond to the following sp e1 is just k times e1 and sp e2 is k times e2 and gaussian curvature gaussian curvature well maybe i can write this in the basis uh, e1 e2 the matrix representation of the shape operator is this K1, 0, 0, K2, okay. A Gaussian curvature. Is the determinant of uh, shape operator. And uh, determinant is just K1, K2, and uh, scalar curvature. Uh, HP, this is just one half trace of SP. So it is just K1 plus K2 over two, okay. K1, A1, A1, evet. Evet, evet. So, uh, and for, for example, cylinder, right? At any point, uh, K1 and K2 are the, uh, so uh, principal curvatures, principal directions are these. Hangisi de minimal demiştik? E1'e, K1'e mi, K2'ye mi? İki küçük olana, değil mi? Tabii aslında U'yu nasıl seçtiğinize göre değişiyor. O yüzden, okay. Let me say this is E1 and E2. Uh, in one direction, curvature zero. In the other direction, curvature is one over R plus or minus. Depends on the choice of the normal vector of the surface. If you choose outer normal like this, then curvature along this direction will be negative because the curvature of the curve, right, uh, is in this case uh, negative because the normal direction to the curve at this point is, uh, uh, you know, towards inward of the surface. But if you choose this outer normal, then uh, curvature will be negative. Uh, so in one of, uh, so this will be just what? Product of the uh, curvatures, K1 times K2. One of them is zero, therefore this is zero. And H is just K1 plus K2 over two, okay? And, uh, well, we have done also the sphere case, right? For the sphere, if you choose any point P, 
uh, and let's say again outer normal uh, k1 and k2 are both minus one over r right r is the radius of the sphere uh, so gaussian curvature is just one over r squared and uh, scalar curvature is minus uh, one over no minus one over r right arithmetic ortalaması minus one over r in this case of course uh, uh, it's actually yeah uh, it both surfaces are actually uh, special surfaces right curvatures at all points are the same right gaussian curvature and scalar curvature uh, are the same uh, at all points so they are all uh, consist of umbilic points right curvatures are uh, constant they do not depend on the point all right hmm. yeah Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it is, uh, we will see it in the case if your surface is given by an uh, equation like this, we will see that Gaussian curvature is uh, related to the Hessian of the second derivatives. It is easy to guess that, you know, it should involve second derivatives because curvature is uh, about second derivatives. And if your surface given like this, we will see that Gaussian curvature is, a, is an expression uh, in terms of second derivatives. Okay, now today I'll start with this lemma. If V and W are linearly independent, dependent uh, vectors in TPM, where M is a surface in R3, then the shape operator evaluated on S and shape operator evaluated on W, we may write or we may not write P, okay? Uh, since I already said that these are vectors in TPM, uh, we just actually have the shape operator at the point P. So sometimes we write P, sometimes we don't, but we keep in mind that uh, we know at which point we are computing the shape operator. And the conclusion is that this is just uh, Gaussian curvature times uh, this. So this is a scalar, this is a real number, and this is a vector, okay? And uh, SV cross product W, V cross product SW is two times the uh, scalar curvature times V cross V, okay? So, of course, this P and this P are the same, okay? At which point you are uh, computing the uh, Gaussian curvature, uh, it is the uh, point where you take the tangent vectors. Maybe I may just put P here to emphasize that all this happens at a point P. Okay. So we have something like this, right? This is our surface and I just take two vectors 
at the point P, tangent vectors. Now here is the proof. Uh, by assumption, V and W are linearly independent vectors in the two-dimensional vector space, the tangent space to the surface at the point uh, P. Therefore, they form a basis. By assumption, this set is a basis for the tangent space to the surface. And uh, suppose that we have this. Let A be the matrix representation of this in the spaces, uh, V and W. So this is a two by two symmetric matrix. Let's say it is this, uh, A, uh, B, B, D. Uh, şey biliyor muyum peki bu ortogonal değil bunlar. Uh, they are not orthogonal. Yeah, maybe let me do it this way. Okay. Just to be on the safe side, I am not sure. If it is uh, orthogonal, if these vectors are orthogonal, then it is symmetric, but never does. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but now I just took arbitrary vectors. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, now, if this is the matrix representation of the shape operator in this basis, VW, then of course I have this, then SPV is what? SPV is just the uh, uh, so V corresponds, V is the first vector, V corresponds to the uh, Okay, the coordinates of this vector. Uh, okay, maybe I should write like this, uh, VW. This is just A, B, C, D times the coordinates of this vector in the spaces. The coordinates of this vector in the spaces is what? One times uh, v zero times W, so this is one zero. Therefore, this is just AC. Uh, and this implies SPV is just uh, A times V plus C times W. Similarly, SPW is what? This time you will write zero one here and you will get, let me tell you what the answer is. Uh, pardon, bunu yanlış yazdım. This is ACBD. So this is AB. Yes, and I am not sure, uh, but doesn't matter. Uh, for our computation, it won't matter. CV plus DV. Yani symmetric bir matrisi orthogonal bir basis de yazmazsak aslında hala symmetric olur herhalde. Yeah, yeah. Nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we get this. Now we would like to compute this, right? SV cross SW is equal to curvature times this gadget. Well, let's see. We will just use direct computation. So now 
SPV cross SPW. What is this? Uh, for the kalmış tahta. Okay. SP. AB olacak, evet. Sağ ol. SPV, what is this? AV plus BW cross CV plus DW. When you open this up, you will get what? Uh, v cross V is zero. So I have just this. Uh, v times W and the coefficient is AD. AD V cross W plus B C W cross V plus uh, B D W cross W. That is also zero, right? This is zero. So this one is zero. This one is zero. And what we get is then so uh, S P V cross SPW is what? Well, this thing is, of course, minus V cross W, right? Cross product is anti-commutative. So what we get is AD minus BC V cross W. But what is this? This is just the determinant of the uh, shape operator. And determinant is just the Gaussian curvature. Okay. What about the second one? Well, we need to compute this for the second equality. Uh, we have. So SPV cross W plus A, uh, no, V cross, V cross SPW. Well, what is this? Uh, SPV was AV cross BW cross W plus uh, V cross SPW, that is CV plus DW. And what is this expression? Now, W cross W is zero, this is zero. And similarly, this is zero. And the other term is just AV, uh, no, A times V cross W plus, uh, D times V cross uh, W. So we have A plus D times V cross W. But what is A cross D? Uh, sorry, A plus D. A plus D is just the trace of the shape operator, right? A plus D is the sum of the eigenvalues. So this is just trace of SP times V cross W. So uh, that's equal to, hence, uh, SPV cross W plus V cross SPW is equal to trace, traces two times the scalar curvature cross uh, times V cross W, right? Trace is just two times the Scalar curvature. Soru olan var mı? Okay. Okay. Uh... Uh, there is a remark. About curvatures. Uh, okay, now, since uh, 
K1 times C2, some uh, product of the uh, normal curvature, I mean, uh, principal curvature is the Gaussian curvature and the sum is two times the scalar curvature. Uh, we see that K1 and K2 and K2 are the roots, roots of the quadratic equation equation. Which equation? Uh, this equation, let's say, uh, okay, uh, x squared plus uh, some of the roots uh, should come here as minus, so minus 2h x plus k. So, uh, what is K1 and K2? K1 and K2 are the roots of this. So, uh, X1, 2 are just minus B plus minus B squared. So, 4 H squared minus uh, 4 uh, AC, so four times Gaussian curvature divided by uh, 2A, just two. So we see what, uh, okay. So this is just H plus minus uh, H squared minus K. So, uh, K1, K2 are just uh, H plus minus this. Okay. And uh, we will finish this section by the following definition. A surface M in R3 uh, is called flat if Gaussian curvature is zero for all P in M. Uh, M is called Minimal, minimal, if HP is zero for all P in M. So if you have a surface and the Gaussian curvature is zero at all points, we call it flat. For example, a plane is flat. Uh, cylinder is flat, okay, Gaussian curvature is zero. And you can easily understand that it is flat when you open it up, it becomes flat. A cone is flat, again, these are flat surfaces. You know, take a piece of paper and, you know, band it any way you want, okay, it is flat. Uh, but sphere is not flat, okay. Gaussian curvature of sphere is uh, one over R squared plus or minus. It is never zero. So the earth is not flat, okay? Uh, and if the scalar curvature is zero, then we call the surface minimal. Why minimal? Because they, uh, this kind of surfaces, they have the minimal sur uh, surface area, okay? Uh, if you have a curve in three space, and if that curve is bounded by a flat, uh, no, 
minimal surface, then that surface has the minimal area among all surfaces having that curve as its boundary. That's why they are called uh, minimal. Okay. Yani bu minimal denmesi nedeni de e, sınırlı belirli bir eğriyi sınırlayan yüzeyler içinde alanları en küçük olanlar bunlar. O yüzden minimal deniyor. All right. So yes. Uh, yeah, for example, sphere is like that, right? When we get No, uh, since the matrix, uh, since the shape operator is symmetric, the matrix is a uh, symmetric matrix. Therefore, eigenvalues are always real. Okay, you cannot get imaginary eigenvalues. Okay, so it is uh, another reason, right? Why symmetric matrices should have uh, positive eigen, I mean, real eigenvalues, right? They correspond to geometric objects and eigenvalues are the curvatures. Therefore, they have to be real numbers. Okay. The next section is uh, called computational techniques. Uh, so far, we haven't done any actually hard computation, right? I didn't write down equations and anything. We just looked at the definitions. We looked at the figures, I mean, uh, uh, shapes of the objects, and then we draw some co conclusions. But we haven't done a serious computation. Uh, maybe last time I did uh, some computation using some curves and so on, right? For the uh, hyperboloid. Uh, today we will do computations. So we take a surface and a surface patch. Uh, we already defined these quantities. Uh, so let, aslında hatırlamıyorum, bunları tarif ettik mi? Let E to be this. So I have X U dot product with X U. X U is a vector, right? Hocam ekran donmuş. Özür dilerim. Ha, ekran donmuş. Uh, okay, uh, we define these quantities. E is x u dot product x u. F is x u dot product x v. Uh, G is x v dot product x v. Okay. Uh, here is one remark. <clears throat> okay, the middle term, the middle term. So this is just x u norm squared, and this is x v norm squared. But what is this? This is x u dot x v. This is just norm of x u times norm of x v times the cosine of the angle between these two, where uh, this angle, ya da buna theta diyeyim de, theta diyeyim, where theta is the angle 
between xu and xp. Okay. Şimdi çalışıyor değil mi? Tamam. Uh, that's the first remark. Uh, second one. What is this gadget? Well, norm of the cross product is what? It is norm of norm squared of the first vector times norm square of the second vector times sine of the angle between them, right? So this is the other way around. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so this is just norm of x u squared times norm of x v squared times <clears throat> uh, sine of the angle between them, right? Maybe should let me write this way. But what is this gadget? Sine squared theta is just one minus cosine squared, one minus cosine squared theta, and uh, cosine squared theta is just uh, norm of this. So one minus uh, x u dot product x v squared. Uh, yok. No, yok. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm sorry. This is just <clears throat> cosine squared is just uh, x sub u, x sub v. Uh, Norm of this is just, okay, so norm of this squared divided by norm of x u squared, norm of x v squared. And if you plug it here, uh, Oh yeah, okay, okay. So uh, norm of x u cross x v squared is what? This expression multiplied with this. So I multiply this gadget with this. So uh, I will get x sub u squared, x sub v squared minus this times this. So this is just the denominator. So we have just x sub u dot product x sub v uh, squared. Well, of course, I, I don't need. Uh, this is just a real number. Yeah. Like this is just a real number. I this is not a vector. I should write it like this. So uh, what was this? This is the normal vector. This is a normal vector, right? X sub u cross x sub p is a normal vector, and this is the length square of that normal vector. And it is equal to what? Uh, so this thing is then, let me write it this way. Uh, pardon. Uh, 
uh, hence uh, okay so uh X sub u cross X sub v squared is just what? Uh, X sub u squared, which is E squared. No, X sub u squared is E, right? Uh, X sub u is just, uh, X sub u squared is just E because, right? Uh, e is X sub u dot product X sub u. Actually, right, this is just, X sub u squared. This is X sub v squared. So this is just e dot, uh, sorry, e times uh, g. E times g minus f squared. So this is just E times G minus F squared. All right. Okay, what else? Uh, third uh, remark is this. If we take two vectors, let's say, uh, sorry, X sub V, in the basis of the tangent space uh, consisting of X sub U and X sub V. So which I can write two basis vectors, right? X sub U and X sub V are the basis vectors, right? So uh, this is my coordinate patch uh, in the UV plane. So, X sub U and X sub V are just this, uh, let's say, uh, tangent vectors, tangent vectors. Uh, let's say I am at this point and I take derivative along this vector and this vector. So uh, we get this too. And suppose W is another vector in the same tangent space with coordinates W1 and W2, then, then what is V dot W? If you take the dot product, so you will get V1 W1 times X sub U squared, and then uh, V1 W2 plus uh, V2 W1, X sub u dot X sub V plus uh, V two times W two X sub V squared. So what is this? This is just V one W one times E and then V one W two plus V two W one uh, F and then W2, uh, V2, G. Okay. Now, what is the normal vector to the surface? Normal vector, uh, let's say this one, U, U is what? Normal vector, X sub U cross X sub V, uh, divided by the length of this vector, right? This is a normal vector. This is the unit normal vector. So, okay.
All right. Uh, now let's uh, write down the coordinate patch in uh, coordinates in R3. So suppose that this coordinate patch has coordinate functions x1, x2, and x3, right? X, Y, Z, or X1, X2, X3 coordinates of the coordinate patch. Uh, then, uh, I know what is X sub U and X sub V, but what about uh, X sub U, U? So I take derivative with respect to U twice. But you will get, but you just need to take the derivative of all these coordinate functions with respect to U twice, so it is just second derivative of x1 with respect to u, second derivative of x2 with respect to u, and second derivative of x3 with respect to u. Uh, similarly, x sub uv will be what? Second derivative of x1 with respect to u and v, second derivative of x2 with respect to u and v, and second derivative of x3 with respect to u and v. And finally, this is just second derivative of x1 with respect to v, second derivative of x2 with respect to v, and second derivative of x3 with respect to v. So we have these expressions. Uh, and we define the following quantities. Define, now define uh, these numbers. The uh, normal curvatures along these vectors. L is uh, S U. So the normal curvature along the vector uh, x sub u, uh, normal curvature along this gadget. And since we know that S is symmetric, although we haven't proved it yet, this is S, uh, S of xv dot product x sub u, right? It doesn't matter in which order you take uh, the vectors and n is the normal curvature along the vector v. Okay, so we have uh, EFG and LMN. Okay, we have H for the scalar curvature, K for the Gaussian curvature. And we have also these quantities. Okay. All right. So let's see. These are, of course, geometric objects, right? L, M, N are normal curvatures along uh, these vectors, tangent vectors. not necessarily principal directions or principal curvatures because you know they are just arbitrary vectors we have chosen some surface patch and we computed those vectors using that surface patch next we will write down the gaussian curvature and scalar curvature in terms of these quantities so that's the result X is a surface patch. Uh, for a surface M in R3, then uh, Gaussian curvature at any point is just L times N minus M squared divided by 
eg minus f squared and scalar curvature is just g times l plus e times n plus or minus uh, fm divided by two times eg minus f squared. Okay. Uh, how we will do this? Zamanım var biraz. Okay. Let me start. Now, uh, we have, we know that, right, we have computed this. S times V, uh, no, S of V times S of W was the Gaussian curvature times this and, and uh, S V cross uh, w plus v cross s w is uh, two times the scalar curvature times v cross w. Let me call this equal to one and this one equal to two uh, since I may need them. This was the proof, right? So, now we need a so-called Lagrange identity. Uh, so, now we need so-called uh, Lagrange identity. And it is this, uh, for any vectors x, y, v, w in R3, we have, so you may first take cross product of x and y. This is the cross product of x and y you get a vector and then you take cross product of V and W, you get another vector. And then you take the dot product of these two vectors. What you get is, uh, can be computed as follows. You form this matrix by taking inner products of these uh, vectors like this and you take the determinant, okay? So this is an uh, exercise. Uh, this is the exercise six of section 6.3. I guess it is one of the exercises uh, given uh, in the uh, syllabus for you. So I will not prove this, okay? Just, you know, plain computation, but it may take some, uh, you know, time to write down everything in detail. Uh, there might be some, you know, clever ways of doing this. Uh, but, you know, you can just compute it uh, with brute force. Okay, now, uh, all right, let me stop now. I'll continue in the second hour.